So here's that timeline, and we add on to the back side of it, COVID-19. So current form, attitudes towards vaccination are volatile, right? This sort of hits the media and, and things kind of spike up and down. We see big shifts in public perception that happen, you know, um, within days to weeks to months as opposed to years or generations as we were talking about before. Context specific, and we'll talk about some of those contexts. Vaccine specific and linked to political and social controversy. Social media is the the elephant in the room. It's several elephants in several rooms, but it really impacts the way that patients um, find information, the way that we share information to patients, and the way that people um, kind of consume and move information around in society. It gives people access to research. Um, I think probably one of my least favorite things for a patient to say to me is, oh, I've done my research. Right, and so I, you know, you, you have to respond to that. Please tell me about your research. Oh, well, there's this one video that I watched. And, and you know, and there's no, for even folks who, who attempt to really do research, they really have a good intention that they want more information. They want to seek that information on their own. They want to find sources that they feel are valid and safe for them. But the, but the current state of social media and, and the internet does not really allow them to be able to validate. It doesn't give the type of information that we need folks to know about whether this is true, whether this is a good source um, or not. And so for folks particularly, and some, some within the medical community, but for folks that are not, this is a, this is a big trap. Um, there's a decline in trust of public officials and government agencies. So we used to be able to say, well, this is what CDC recommends, or this is what ACIP says. This is the recommended schedule. Those experts tell us that we should do this. I can't say that anymore. In fact, I don't say CDC in my visits with patients, especially not in, uh, not in rural Missouri for lots of reasons uh, that they will react negatively to that, where that used to be potentially a source of kind of a safe authority, and we'll talk about some of those biases and why. Increase in preference for alternative approaches. I want natural immunity. I, that's better, I prefer natural immunity. Like, that's great, vaccines cause natural immunity, right? It's an antigen, either way, it's a protein. It's something that your body sees, is exposed to, and develops an immune system reaction to. It's your body that's making the immunity, it's not the vaccine, right? And so a discerning between what that actually means for patients, that's certainly a strong preference, and vaccines are perceived as artificial. Um, being infected with the pathogen is perceived as natural. Natural is somehow marketed as better, whether that has to do with all sorts of things like, you know, goop or, or whatever other sources have created um, the mindset in society, it washes over onto vaccines. Um, definitely an increase in political polarization and belief-based extremism. Um, there are many, many graphics I could show you that sort of uh, the political divide and then the things that sort of get associated with each camp, right? So um, vaccines are on the left. It, it, it's a simple, you know, health-related fact, the way that, that these work is scientific, but they've gotten shunted um, to one side of the political spectrum. Um, to everyone's detriment. Um, this uh, survey shows between just, you know, over a period of time, the way that trust has moved uh, between, you know, 2009, I think, it, yeah, and 2021, um, Centers for Disease Control. And if you took that poll today, which direction do you think these dots have gone? Way down, right? Like, even further down. I think that that has increased uh, significantly. And um, so you can see there, that's a pr I mean, pretty remarkable between April 2020 and January 2022, um, how many people say that they do not trust Centers for Disease Control. So this is why I do not say those letters uh, in a row in my visits with patients. So timing is everything. Um, spikes in vaccine hesitancy correspond to big events, uh, whether that's changes in infections, um, changes in technology, changes in uh, reported risks with vaccines, so a pandemic or the anticipation of one, right? The H1N1 back in 2009 was probably the last sort of major event prior to this pandemic coming on, a new type of vaccine. I wish we'd never said the letters mRNA. <laughs> B 
because it was a new and novel type of vaccine. Instead of being perceived as that as a positive, that was uh, certainly taken as this is foreign, this is scary, this is new. Remember the fear and distrust of the unknown and of things that we don't understand. So um, that was kind of a critical, potentially marketing error. Uh, not that people don't deserve to understand the information, but by emphasizing that, we made something foreign and scary instead of um, the way that folks hope that it would be perceived as um, you know, a, a major scientific advancement and we should celebrate it. Um, a new target for vaccination, HPV, right? Who, who has had these challenging conversations um, about uh, the human papillomavirus and where, where it comes from, where it resides in your body? Uh, so that, though, has had a lot more difficulty gaining traction than things like tetanus. How many people know someone who's had tetanus? Couple. How many people know someone who has had HPV? Everyone, right? Um, and so yet the acceptance of the vaccine and the way that it's talked about and perceived is completely, uh, completely different simply because of some certain factors associated with HPV. And then a newly reported vaccine risk, myocarditis. If I had counted on the number, probably on two hands, the number of times I had to discuss myocarditis prior to the COVID vaccine, and then I would use all my fingers and toes multiple times for the number of times I've discussed myocarditis after the COVID-19 vaccine. How many patients have I had with myocarditis in the last couple of years? Three, one, post-vaccination, two, random organic myocarditis, you know, post-viral um, or other, uh, other things that would typically have happened normally in my practice.